It's time for bed, Dee Dee. Go hop in bed. I'll be right in to tuck you in. Good night, Daddy. What are you doing here? My mommy's coming. You better hide or she's gonna catch you. Okay, sweetie, night, night. What are you looking at? I don't think she can. Now promise me you'll be a good girl while I'm out singing. I promise. No sneaking out this time. I'll get in trouble. I promise. That's my good girl. Mommy. Is Daddy ever coming back? I don't know, honey. Maybe someday when he's ready. But don't you worry. Mommy always comes back. I'll be home before you even wake up. Get some nice sleep. Okay, she's gone. She's gonna sing at the ghost note tonight. It's the most beautiful cabaret. Come on, we'll miss her show. Oh no, somebody moved the ash cart. Look. I know. You could go down there and move the ash cart, and I could jump down. I'll play here, so you can go over there and be a shadow person. Wow, I wish I could do that. Could you teach me how to do that? Okay, now move the ash cart to where I can jump into it. I wonder who moved it. Do you think it was Mommy? She got really mad at me the last time I snuck out. Where did you go for so long? I haven't seen you in three weeks. I really wish you had been at my birthday. Daddy missed my birthday. Now we go this way. Follow me. I think you're too big. <laughs> hmm. I think that goes all the way through to the other street. If I move this cart, you could walk up the shadow, couldn't you?
haven't started the show yet. You missed the dancers. They were so beautiful. I want to be a dancer when I grow up. Or an acrobat, like you. Did you always want to be an acrobat? You're so good. You should be in the circus. Too bad nobody can see you. Come on, let's go in. Wanna put on some lights? I promise you'll like the view. Come on, sugar. Help a girl out here. We can't play in the dark. Hey, one's on the fritz. Hey, Sparky, could you do something about that one, too? It's really messing with our rhythm. Charlie, would you? What? 
What are you doing here? You're singing good tonight, Ken. Don't smooth talk me, Johnny. We had an agreement. Is that what you call it? I never wanted to leave. You kicked me out. You want money from me, Johnny? Because I'm ducking the lamp. I don't need a handout, babe. Look at this suit. You work in another one of your famous deals? This one's big, Cat. Oh, sure it is. Till it blows up like last time and the time before Not that. Not this time, babe. I'm gonna make it all up to you. I gotta get back on stage. Then meet me after. I'm staying at the Excelsior. But you think you're just gonna jitterbug your way back into our lives with a lot of sweet talk? It's gonna be better this time, babe. You're gonna see how much better it can be. Room 529, kiddo. Where is he going? I need to talk to him. He just went through the gate. I bet he's going to the bar. Mommy said Daddy left us, but that's not true, is it? She kicked him out. It won't open! But you could break it open. You're pretty strong. Come on, it's this way. Vincenzo! He's a world-famous illusionist. What's Daddy doing with him? Come on, Vincenzo. It's just some film footage of your act. Why can't you let me borrow it just overnight? Because it is my new act and it's top secret, which is why my agent has it safely locked in his office upstairs. I just want to show it to my investors. They want to get to know you better. Mr. Fenris, I have performed my illusion act for the King of England and the Emperor of Japan. There are untouchables in India who tell stories of the amazing Vincenzo. If your investors don't know me, they're not in show business. You think I can't pay you? Look at this suit. I'm staying at the Excelsior Hotel. I've asked around about you, Mr. Fenris. People tell me not to trust you. And I've asked around about you, Mr. Amazing. You're not as flush as you look. You've got a few debts. Which is why I think you'll perform at the opening night of my circus. You dare accuse me Look, of... I made a beautiful poster. Now I just need to borrow your film reel. Until I see some earnest money from you, I'm damned if I will lend you the time of day. All right. I'll get you a check. Cash. Cash, don't worry. I'll call you tomorrow. It's been such a pleasure meeting with you. Thanks for the drink. Mr. Benny, I have performed. 
born for the king of the universe. There are monkeys who know about the amazing Vincenzo. Your investors haven't heard about me. They're stupid. Oh no, there's no way to get across. I know, if we could get the spotlight working, then I could track you with him. But it's out of power. We need some luminance. Do you have any? I was good at fixing things. Maybe you could find another way in. What are you doing here? You're not supposed to be out this late. Where's your mom? Did mommy really kick you out? Were you spying on us at the cabaret? Are you coming home? <laughs> well, that's my plan. I've got to convince your mother. Is she here? No, I snuck out. <laughs> oh, boy, you're growing up fast. You used to be scared of the dark. But did she really kick you out? Well, yeah, kind of. At the time, I wasn't being very good to her, so I guess I had it coming. I missed you so much. <sighs> I missed you too, honey. But I'm gonna come back home. I'm putting together a circus, see? It's gonna pay for everything. And you know who it's gonna star? The amazing Vincenzo. <laughs> How much snooping around have you been doing? Yeah, it's gonna star the amazing Vincenzo. He's good, huh? Look, you're really not supposed to be out this late. I'm, I'm gonna take you home. I brought you the mail. Shh, shh, shh. But... Shh, uh, I got a couple of investors coming here, and they don't like kids much. I need you to run home by yourself, okay? But I brought you... Didi, you have to get out of here. I won't tell Mom you snuck out. Okay, go. Hey, Carmine, Silvio. He doesn't have the money to show them. His name is Salvio, so why are we here? Salvio, yeah, what did I say? I got great news. Vincenzo is in. You have to show them the money. You got him? You're sure? Sure, I'm sure. He's gonna play opening night. Really bring in the crowds. So that's why you brought us here, huh? You're gonna show us his act? Yeah, yeah, except uh, the projector's broke. Because if you don't got him, your circus is gonna flop and you're not gonna be able to pay us back. And then I'm gonna have to break your arms and then we see how well you swim. Look, I'm gonna need just a little more money to uh, finalize things with Vincenzo. Are you kidding me? 
What'd you spend our money on that soup? Listen, it's all gonna come back to you. Oh! Show them the movie. Show them the movie. Knock it off, Sal. Check this out. Geez, he is amazing. I told you I got him. Okay, let's go get your money. Thanks a bunch. Look, why don't I swing by tomorrow, pick it up? Relax. Let's go have a drink, huh? I know a guy who'll fix that finger right I, up. I can't. I gotta go meet someone. Boy, you're in a hurry, huh? She must be a real ripe tomato. <laughs> you wanna go meet Johnny's tomato, Sal? I like a ripe tomato. That tomato's my wife. Always wanted to meet the wife. Uh, we'll play canasta. Just the four of us. Huh? Okay, but he's not asking, Johnny. He's telling. You're gonna hurt my mom. She was getting pretty loud in there. See? You meet a guy's wife, now he's got a whole new reason to make good. How come you know so much? Cause my ma used to smack me every time I didn't know. I should try that with my kids.
Maybe you could sneak in through a window or something. And then you could let me in. Why'd you have to come back, Johnny? I want to come home, Cat. And you got another pot of gold at the end of the rainbow? Uh, it's the past, Cat. I've changed. Oh, yeah? You get religion? I got lonely. I miss you, baby. I'm never gonna give you another reason to kick me out, I swear. Never's a big word. Feels like I heard it before. This time you're gonna be nothing but proud of me. Look at this hotel suite. I got investors. The ones who just left? Yeah, I'm real proud. They're the ones who broke your finger? This? It's nothing. I got a cot in a desk drawer. In a door. A car door. Remember the horse doctor you were gonna fix races with? That was wrong, Cat. I know that. And the bar we bought, where your friends didn't have to pay and everyone was your friend. Well, you gotta cultivate your clients. And the strip joint, where you got too close to the help? Now, there you're wrong, Cat. I showed the move, sure, but I never put a hand where it wasn't supposed to go. How can I believe you, Johnny? Your lips are moving. Every night I dream of the good times, Cat. Tell me you don't, too. A night I don't dream is a good night. You don't believe a word you're saying. I know, because I can read your mind like a highway sign. No, Johnny. Not again. You're a carousel of broken dreams. You keep coming around and around. No one is ever going to love you like I do, kiddo. Get back. Don't try and kiss me, Johnny. I'll lose my mind. You going to shoot me? Ah, go ahead and shoot. I got two holes in me where you and Dee, Dee used to be. Put another one in there. Finish me off. What do you want with Dee, Dee? You're not even her real father. What, you think Vincenzo's real? All he ever gave Dee, Dee was her cute little nose. Yeah, maybe I'm not her real father, but I'm the one that showed her how to tie her shoes. I'm the one that put her to bed when you had to stay out late. You took her to see his show. Did he change his mind? He doesn't want to be her father. He doesn't want to be anybody. I hate you. Jesus, Cal, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, well, that hurts. No, 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 no. No, don't die, Johnny. <sighs> Dude, take care of Dee Dee, okay? Tell her that I love her. Please no. don't leave me. Tell her whatever she needs to hear. You don't believe a word you're saying. I know, because I can read your mind like a highway sign. No, Johnny. Not again. You're a carousel of broken dreams. You keep coming around and around. No one is ever going to love you like I do, kiddo. Get back. Don't try and kiss me, Johnny. I'll lose my mind. You going to shoot me? Ah, go ahead and shoot. I got two holes in me where you and Dee, Dee used to be. Put another one in there. Finish me off. What do you want with Dee, Dee? You're not even her real father. What, you think Vincenzo's real? All he ever gave Dee, Dee was her cute little nose. Yeah, maybe I'm not her real father, but I'm the one that showed her how to tie her shoes. I'm the one that put her to bed when you had to stay out late. You took her to see his show. Did he change his mind? He doesn't want to be her father. He doesn't want to be anybody. I hate you. Jesus, Cal, what are you doing? Mommy, stop. What are you doing? No, nothing. Mommy and Daddy were having a little fight. It's not a real gun. It's just a toy. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a toy, Didi. Mommy. Are you gonna let Daddy come home? Didi. Please, please let Daddy come home. He's in pretty deep with some bad people, Dee Dee. Maybe he should make good with them first. Right, Johnny? Maybe I'm no good without my family. Maybe I need my family to make good. Johnny. Yeah, Daddy needs us. If this is another train wreck, it's not just gonna be you and the train this time. I'm not gonna let it wreck this time. I promise. I've missed you so much. Yay! Daddy's coming home! But he's not my real daddy, is he? circus is in town? It's Daddy's circus. He says it's gonna be the biggest thing ever. Except he always says stuff like that, and then something goes wrong. And Vincenzo's my real daddy. We have to go talk to him.
They're so happy. There aren't any pictures of the bad times. These are in the basement. She only takes them out when Daddy's living with us. You know in stories where the little girl is really a princess and her parents aren't really her parents? Does she still get to see them? notice. Daddy says he's going to pay all the bills when the circus is a big hit. Come on, I want to go find Vincenzo. They'll hold you. You'll have to go through shadows. Hey, Vincenzo, ready for our big night? People are really excited. You're gonna have to give them their money back. What? We're sold out. You haven't paid me. I got the money. We're selling out. You'll have it before the show. Even if you do, I can't perform here. Your circus is a disaster. It's coming together. Your puppet show about the princess is missing the princess. You've lost your hot air balloon, and where did you get that pirate ship? It is a broken down piece of junk. Come on, Vincenzo, it's opening day. There's always a few wrinkles to iron out. Look, I'll get it all fixed. No problem. Consider it done. All right. But don't think that I will be some sort of shiny bauble that lures people into your scrapyard. He's so mean. I'll get it fixed, I promise. Or I'm a dead man. I'm worried about Daddy. He always says it's OK, but those gangsters really hurt him. We have to fix the circus, so Daddy will be safe. Come on, it's this way.
made so they can't pull it down. But nobody can get up there to untangle it. I bet somebody didn't pay attention when he was tying it down. A carousel! I think I can turn it on. Do you have any luminaries? I think I can turn this on now. I think you're gonna need to get that beacon working. I wish I could do that. Would you teach me someday? Has anyone seen the princess puppet? We can't really start the story without her. That sounds like daddy. I know she's around here somewhere. No, she had a hat. A sort of princess hat. Darn! Where did I put her? she is. Once upon a time, there was a princess who lived in a castle with her father, the king. The king loved her very much because daddies loved their daughters. Unfortunately, the kingdom also had an ogre who was eating travelers because ogres do that. So the king did what kings do and promised that anyone who slew the ogre would get to marry his only daughter, the princess, and become king when he died. The king's lands were very far away, and the ogre was very large, so only one knight showed up. His name was Fred, and he fell immediately in love with the princess. Fred was a brave knight, and he marched off the next morning, singing a brave song as loudly as he could. 
after several days had passed, the princess got to wondering what had happened to her future husband. So she set off into the forest to look for him. The princess tracked Fred's footprints through a strange wilderness full of scary sounds and hidden dangers. Chasms filled with razor-sharp bamboo. Fortunately, she was a very brave princess who loved adventures, just like you. She used her wits to get past unexpected obstacles. She came to a wide river filled with snapping crocodiles. She couldn't even swim. So what do you think she did? She ran on top of their heads. That's right. It was a magical forest where the plants seemed to know each other. She had to use magic mushrooms to get high or up. She learned to use some bendy tree branches to fling herself across a patch of deadly sharp bamboo. As the sun was setting, she came to the giant ogre's campsite. And there, the princess discovered that the ogre had captured Fred and hung him from a tree as a snack. The ogre did not appreciate visitors at all. Even Fred seemed a little embarrassed to see him. princess was a woman of action, and she was nimble, and the ogre was clumsy and easy to taunt. What's a taunt? That's when you make fun of something. You should never make fun of people, but with ogres, sometimes you have to. And so the princess tricked the ogre and rescued Fred. Fred didn't feel too good about it. He really loved the princess. Fortunately, the king told him about a giant spider that he could slay in order to win the princess's hand. So Fred marched off to the lair of the giant spider, singing a brave song, a little less loudly than before. After several days had passed, the princess got to wondering what had happened to her future husband. So she went off looking for him again. Fred's footprints led her into a dark and creepy cavern, full of strange dripping sounds, kind of like the basement at school. Her footsteps echoed and echoed, until it sounded like someone was following her. Soon, she came to a vast pit, filled with vicious, deadly spikes. It was much too big to jump over, but far off, she could hear moaning. She thought it might be Fred. So what do you think she did? I know, I know. What? She used an umbrella. What? Like that nanny in that movie. This is the Middle Ages, honey. Where would she get an umbrella? I don't know, but that's what she used. I don't, I, I don't think I have an umbrella. Well, you better find one, because she used an umbrella. Where am I supposed to get an umbrella? Oh, uh, there we go. So, the princess bravely threw herself into the air, slowing her fall using an umbrella, just like that nanny in the movie. She floated down into the cave, deeper and deeper into the cavern she floated. She thought she could hear Fred moaning, but maybe it was only the wind. Finally, she landed softly, right in a spider's web. Fortunately, it was a very old web, and she was able to break free. Unfortunately, the web was the only thing holding up a giant boulder. The princess needed to find somewhere to hide. Suddenly, a giant spider jumped out of the shadows and attacked her. She ran and climbed and jumped and climbed, but the giant spider was very good at climbing, too. It had eight legs, and the princess only had two.
Unfortunately, the princess remembered how the webs were holding up boulders. Finally, she found Fred. He was all wrapped up like a present for the giant spider's girlfriend. He was dreadfully embarrassed about having to be rescued again. He really loved the princess. The princess decided he was cute. Fortunately, the king told him about a dragon that he could slay in order to win the princess's hand and stop being so embarrassed. So Fred marched off to the mountaintop of the dragon, singing a brave song, very quietly. After a few days, the princess got to wondering... Why her dad kept trying to give her away? That too. But she was worried about Fred, so she went off to find him. The dragon's mountain was cold, and the wind howled at her to turn back. There were rock slides and fiery chasms, but she was very brave and nimble, just like you. She wasn't going to be put off by a few deadly dangers. Up and up she climbed. When she got cold, she thought about the hot buttered muffins she would make once she got Fred home. Do you still like muffins? I love muffins. The princess hoped Fred liked muffins. When the princess got to the lair of the dragon, she was not very surprised to see Fred hanging from the roof of the dragon's cave. So she taunted the dragon until it roared its fiery breath at her. Finally, burning away the ropes that were tying up Fred. And so the princess and Fred lived happily ever after. Fred never had to go on another adventure again, and they had hot buttered muffins every morning. There is another version of the story where the princess flew off on the dragon's back to have a life full of adventures, but that's for another day.
morning. supposed to shoot it again?
take that. Bam, say goodnight, Gracie. Maybe we can get out that way. Oh, I bet there's nothing actually broken. I bet it's just something you forgot to turn on. Figures, Daddy bought it. I bet there's just like one thing he forgot to do, and that's why the whole ride isn't working. It's probably in the control room, or the engine room, or something like that. Come on, it's dark out there. How are you gonna climb on shadows if it's dark? Hey, this is that maintenance room I was talking about. Why didn't Daddy do it? I bet he didn't even read the instructions. I think we can restart the whole ride. I knew it. I knew it was something simple. I think all we need to do is pull these levers at the same time. Are you ready? Okay, three, two, one, go. I think we fixed it! I think we fixed the whole thing! Vincenzo came back! Hey, what do you think, Vincenzo? Did you ever consider trying out for the trapeze? They're good at what they do, Mr. Fenris. I'll give you that. I got my balloon back, I got a princess for my puppet theater, and my pirate ship is sailing the bounding main. So you're a man of your word. Go ahead. Count it. It's all there. Need a hand with your stuff? My apparatuses are very delicate, and I don't like anyone in my workshop. Provide the audience, Mr. Fenris, and I will provide amazement. Mr. Fenris, why are you organizing this circus? I know who your investors are. Well, I promised my wife and daughter I'd clean up my act. But if I don't pull in the crowds for you, those boys are gonna put you in the river. Without Cad and Didi, I wouldn't care much if they did. Ah, so those crowds better come. I didn't talk to him! I didn't talk to Vincenzo! Hey! Vincenzo's going to a secret workshop. I can finally talk to him all alone. But... where is it? Do you think he would ever take me with him? Vincenzo, you know, when he travels all around the world. Now we go this way. Follow me. Excuse me, mister. Do you know where Mr. Vincenzo's workshop is? Yep. Everybody knows where it is. It's by the big clock tower. You can't miss it. But good luck getting inside. No one's ever been. Thank you. Come on!
down. This is a big mechanism. I hope you brought some luminaries with you. What are you doing here? Who are you? How did you get in? Uh, the big clock? 
You went through the clockwork? How? Who are you with? It's a puzzle, right? It's meant to keep strangers out. It's a very good puzzle. Not good enough, apparently. But I'm not a stranger. I'm Dee Dee. Dee Melancholia. Oh. Your mother put you up to this, didn't she? He thinks I'm doing my homework. I wanted to meet you. I didn't ask for a child, all right? You didn't want a child? What would I do with one? Hmm? I'm a busy man. My apparatuses are precise. They take months to hone. H how would I have the time? That is what I told her. I'm sorry. I travel. I'm going on tour for six months. Budapest, Istanbul, Calcutta, Shanghai. I dine out with dukes and gangsters. But, but I could help you with your apparatuses. I'm good with puzzles. You could train me. I won't be any trouble. You broke my left-handed induction coil. That took me a week to choose. I'm sorry. I told your mother all of this years ago. What is her phone number? <laughs> okay, see? This is what I'm talking about. This is what I can't have. Your mother cried every week. <sighs> You're better off with Kat. A little girl should be with her mother. Okay. All right. Do you want to come to see my show? No! Well, here's two tickets in case you change your mind. Okay. Let's get Cat on the phone, hmm? What do I do with you? Lock you up? Put bars on the windows? I can't stay at home all night and watch you. I know. I'm not one of those secretaries who punch out at five. I'm a rising star, right? Did Johnny know about this? Because I'm gonna kill him. I just wanted to talk to Vincenzo. I never should have let him back. I just need... Just wanted... And now, ladies and gentlemen, the amazing Vincenzo's Theater of the Unreal! I knew it! I knew this was another one of Johnny's pipe dreams. You screwed up again, didn't you? Johnny, what's going on? Is this part of the show? I got it, I got it. They're getting antsy. They're gonna want their money back. If you give them the money back, you can't pay us. It's all under control. I just gotta go find a spare ball. Fuse. Something. Why can't he get anything right? We're gonna have to fix this one, too. We need to light up the stage somehow. Hmm. This is a weird lighthouse. Do you think it's some kind of science lab? It reminds me of Vincenzo's workshop. I think this is what lights up the lights up there. Let me see if I can fix it.
After a few days, the princess got to wondering. Why did I keep trying to give her away? And now, ladies and gentlemen, the amazing Vincenzo's Theater of the Unreal. I got the lights on. We'll talk about this after. Ladies and gentlemen, a physicist named Albert Einstein tells us that our universe may not be the only one. There may be infinite others, each slightly different from ours. 
But our dreams in our world may be reality in those. To citizens of these other worlds, we are shadows. This appears to you to be an ordinary box. But it is actually what we call a tesseract, or an octocoron. Suppose I open it, not in the three dimensions we live in, but along its fourth dimension. I can take out surprising things, things that are familiar and yet strange. But in this world of shadows, what seems familiar may be dangerous. What you don't know can hurt you. But what frightens you can also turn into something of surpassing beauty if you only understand it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Goodbye. To Johnny, you're up to something, aren't you? I tried, Cat. I really tried. Mom was right. I made a lot of promises I couldn't keep. What is with you? Without you, I'd be in the river. But it worked out, Daddy. I nearly got you hurt, kiddo. You would have saved me if I needed it. Enjoy the show? I want you to meet the little girl who turned the lights back on. You made the lighthouse work? I fixed the puppet show, too. And the pirate ship. You fixed the pirate ship? It was only a little broken. See? She's almost as smart as you. Of course, she's brave, too. What's that supposed to mean? That you're rich, famous, and afraid of a little girl. What would you have me do, Mr. Fenris? Take her on my world tour, take her to Shanghai and Istanbul and those other filthy and dangerous cities as some sort of apprentice? Is, is that what you came here to propose? Daddy, no. no! I don't know, just... Dee Dee deserves better. They both deserve better. They need you. I think they need you. Me? I'm a walking calamity. No, Daddy, we you need you. You risked your life to be with them. Johnny, what did you do? He nearly got himself killed to get you back. I wouldn't do that for anybody. But I'm just gonna keep screwing up. I can help you fix things. Would you take me back? For good? Oh, Johnny. Yay! Would you like to see my workshop? Again? Yeah. I bet you get to Shanghai on your own steam. But how? Well, you'll figure something out. After all, you are my daughter. How'd you do that? I thought only Dawn could do that. It's been a long time, hasn't it? Thanks for taking care of Dee Dee. Mom. 